Ready Check Radio. Stand by as we get ready to serve up all your news this week in the world of gaming. Welcome to Gaming Gumbo. Hello, 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 Internet! It's Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and that means right here on Ready Check Radio, twitch.tv slash readycheckradio. It's time for Gaming Gumbo, your weekly gaming wrap-up show. I'm your host, as always, Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. The gods of wars, gentlemen. We're just <laughs> days away. The gods of the wars. Are they, though? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We got an update to some other things last week that are going to make you say, ah, shit. <laughs> and then, of course, some other news. If you're watching on uh, YouTube after the fact or listening on iTunes, Spotify, Audible, any of those platforms, thank you so much. We appreciate the support while you're there. Give us a like, a subscribe, turn on those notifications, throw a comment down below, feed those algorithms. You know how it is. Chat hanging out with us live Saturday, 7 p.m. here on Twitch. In fact, I'll make it easy for you. Head on over to that website right there, readycheckradio.com. All of our old episodes of this and all of our other shows are available there, and all the socials are in the upper right-hand corner to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and all that fun stuff. Joining me to go over all kinds of fun stuff, Mr. Troy Blackburn. What's up, Noob Fridge? I am in mourning today. Tennessee has lost their first game of the year, so sad face for me. Oh, poor baby. I'm so sad for you and my two and six Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> also on the line, resident artist of Ready Check Radio, Yod. How are you, sir? A little annoyed with that first story we're talking about I there. I know, right? I, I even I used know. profanities in chat when we were doing <laughs> and it broke. I know. It feels <sighs> so bad. It feels, I feel betrayed. I do, I do, too. Hey, again, great job on the uh, Halloween artwork for uh, last week's show. If you didn't oh, get a chance you. to check it out last week's show, go ahead and click play on that. You're going to love some of the artwork. Although, if you weren't in chat, you missed pre-show and post-show stuff, so... Yes. Always a benefit to hanging out with us live. Let's get this update out of the way. Last week, gents, we yeah. talked about uh, Symbiogenesis, a trademark <sighs> Square Enix had filed. And by the definition of Symbiogenesis, seemed to point towards, hey, this is could be construed as the plot to the original Parasite Eve. It, it was also used somewhere in the book, I believe, that the game's based oh, off of. I didn't of. know that. I didn't yes. know that. So that that's why it was such a connection that mm -hmm. people were making because it was in the book it was that's what it was described as yeah was it's on. not so yeah no <laughs> unfortunately no it's not it doesn't have anything to do with parasite eve even if you thought maybe it's going to be a shitty mobile game or something like no it has nothing no. to do with parasite eve it's a freaking NFT game. Yeah, well, I don't even know if you can they call it a game. They refer to it as entertainment. Uh, they At the Web3 Conclave in India, Square Enix did announce that Symbiogenesis, we didn't have a show Thursday, that's why we're kind of updating it here, uh, is going to be the game publisher's first detail, a digital collectible art project designed from the ground up for Web3 fans. They call it brand new entertainment content, promising uh -huh. collectible digital uh -huh. art paired with an interactive story and, quote, a dedicated community, end quote, which Polygon rightfully, uh, Polygon writer Michael McWherter uh, uh, <laughs> correctly points out it's unclear how Square Enix could possibly guarantee it'll have a dedicated community. But they were addressing people at a Web3 conference, so they were definitely pitching to the home crowd there on this. Who knows? Uh, yeah, maybe you can be using things as profile pictures on social media and stuff in theory. But God, Troy, nothing to do with Parasite Eve. Nothing. I'm with the, I'm with Ninja Pandas and Chad. Just burn it with fire. Uh, throw this garbage away. Everybody's got to try it, I guess. Everybody's got to try it once. But like you said, they, they avoided the word game. Oh, uh, 100%. Because, yeah. 
the digital the ones entertainment that call themselves games yeah even <laughs> the ones that call themselves games i haven't seen an nft game that has much game in it anyway so it'd be <laughs> i'd be hard pressed to see one that actually call itself a game and be a game brand new <laughs> entertainment uh did like ubisoft quietly back off after they tried to say they were going to do some NFT stuff, and they did just kind of went. Um, oh yeah, they wait, remember they did the like whole it. Ubisoft quartz yeah. thing. Right, right, and then they, it just kind of quietly died. Yeah, well, it didn't <laughs> quietly <laughs> die. They they implemented it in oh, what what game was it? It was I think a Ghost Recon multiplayer game. Maybe. Chat can correct me. I I can't recall which one it was, but it was like in, and then all of a sudden they were like, yeah, we're taking it out. Yeah, they, they, they like. <laughs> It just like, got shoved underneath the rug. Yeah. And, like, we don't talk about that rug anymore. <laughs> uh, what was it? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, chat, yeah. chat can remind me of what game yeah. it was. Uh, but yeah, they, they totally just, nope, forget it. We're taking it out. <laughs> and this is Ubisoft we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is Ubisoft, which by the way, uh, did I put it in the show notes? I, I think I did. Um, yeah, there was something about Ubisoft that we were maybe going to cover, or I saw. No, I, I guess I didn't put it in the show know. notes. I don't, I don't remember anything. Yeah, about it. Uh, uh, a lot of it looks like the room, a new rumor, by the way, since this one didn't pan out. Uh, <laughs> a new rumor is, seems to indicate that a lot of Ubisoft titles are now going to make their way back to Steam. For those of you that have been gaming a while, was it Breakpoint? Ghost, yeah, so it was Ghost Recon. Thank you, Ninja Pandas. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Um, these games used to be on Steam, and s there's like one or two titles that still are because they were before Ubisoft was trying to like really push you play, and then they signed kind of you know partnerships with Epic Games for a bunch of their stuff. Uh, but somebody has found in like digital coding from data mining in the background labels for Ubisoft games that reference Steam, uh, mm -hmm. being the version. So. We could see don't, Ubisoft. Don't get too excited though, because we've seen Ubisoft games on there before. We used to have to log into Uplay to play them. Oh yeah, like right. even on the Epic Game Store, you still do. Yeah, even on the Epic Game Store, you still do. I remember doing a stream and could not figure out for the life of me why I could not boot up Roller Champions for an MMO bomb stream over and over and over again, getting in there. It's because I had uninstalled Uplay. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, you're trying to launch it on Epic Games, buddy, but you still need Uplay. Ugh. We'll see, though. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? You know, Ubisoft, not in a great position right now, could certainly benefit no, they, from a wider audience. They need all the game sales they can get from wherever yep. they can get them from. Exactly. Well, rip Symbiogenesis. Um, other big Welcome, our NFT overlords. <laughs> <laughs> In other big news this week, Marvel and EA did confirm that they now have a three-game deal for Marvel games published and developed internally to EA, starting with Iron Man. Now, we knew about Iron Man, but that, that had been announced already. Uh, but this is now official that it's actually a three-game deal. Now, we don't know right now what the second and third games will be. Will they be like, you know, here's the Thor game and here's a Hulk game to go with the Iron Man game? Or will they kind of like do an Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, kind of like Sony and Insomniac, what they've been doing with, you know, Spider-Man and Miles Morales one, and then there's a new one coming. So, like, we don't know, but EA Motives Iron Man is going to be, from what we saw already or heard already, a single-player action-adventure game, and then we're going to get two more behind that. But we don't know, like, single player, multiplayer, live service. Like, we don't know. We just don't know. I'm hopeful, and I'm not a huge Marvel fan, so I really don't care. <laughs> but I'm hopeful for you Marvel fans that this is kind of like, yeah, Chad already said it, Marvel Avengers. Hopefully it's not another one of those. Yeah, get some nice no, single insane. player Marvel games. Like, you have to look, Troy, at the success of the Spider-Man series and go, you can do a single player hero Marvel, DC, whatever game, and have it do really well if you make a good game. Like you yeah, you absolutely can. And and the MCU has raised the stock of Iron Man so high at this point anyway. Like he's probably one of the more popular characters. Spider Man's always been number one, like box office, yeah. comics, whatever. It's always Spider Man. 
Uh, but you can make a case for Iron Man being a solid number two with uh, Robert Downey Jr. playing him in the MCU. He became a very popular character kind of out of nowhere once the MCU began. So I could see a, uh, man, I'd be excited for a Spider-Man-esque Iron Man solo, solo adventure game. Well, I mean, you're going to get that one. You're going to get, now whether or not you'll see it on PC is another deal too. I mean, it's EA, so I would assume it'll probably, unless there's some contracts with Sony, I'd. The thing is, though, will he look like Robert Downey Jr.? <laughs> Are they going to purchase the rights to use that his his likeness, or are they going to go the route of Square? Square Dude, could you, would, would could you imagine if he if he voiced it in everything? How much of a that, big deal yeah, that would become all of yeah, a sudden? Yeah, that would be a huge deal. I, and I think if they want to go big, that's how they go big. But They've got to get that Robert Downey Jr. money. And he's probably, yeah, I was going to say, it's going to cost some yep. dollars. It's going to cost some dollars, but it'll make them a lot more. Yeah, and we don't know anything about plot or right. when in the Iron Man timeline it takes place. So, like, you know, we have no details about that one, uh, uh, any more details about that one, and none about games two and three. I really hope, yeah, the, uh, yeah, there's a big turnoff yeah. to Avengers when everybody was like Uncanny Valley. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you hey, what's what's up? Almost Hemsworth, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they should have went completely stylized at that point and just yeah. you know yeah, one hundred percent. Gone the comics route, one hundred percent. Uh, this yeah. is the you know we're closing in a couple more days, a couple more days. What is the actual day? Uh, the ninth, isn't it? Something like that. Something like that. Unless we aren't. Yeah, November 9th. <laughs> November 9th. Uh, look. <laughs> Looks looked more like Morton Downey Jr. God, you're as old as we are. Wow. <laughs> to throw wow. that reference out. Uh, the only thing I remember about Morton Downey Jr., because like that's even a little older than us, Takao. Like, I remember being a very young kid and my dad watching some guy on TV screaming. Like, and years later I find out that's Morton Downey Jr. And, you know, that was his whole shtick back then. So yeah, you're just slightly older than I am, like a year older. So it, even even at that age, it would have been like you were seven, eight, nine, and aware of him, but didn't know him. But I remember my dad like watching that occasionally. I hated when that was on. It was like, oh my god, what is this guy yelling about? Uh, he was kind of like what the, the Jerry Springer before there was like a Jerry Springer, and his things weren't yeah. as outlandish as Jerry Springer became, but. Anyway, God of War Ragnarok comes out in four days. The reviews are already starting, but I'll tell you what, I don't even care about the reviews, gents. <laughs> this trailer might be just absolute gold. Just <laughs> That is an amazing trailer. Absolute gold. Uh, if you haven't seen this trailer, definitely check it out. It's kind of like a help group <laughs> for dads that want to be Kratos. Uh, we got Ben Stiller dressed as Kratos with his son. We've got John Travolta with his daughter. And then, of course, we've got LeBron James with his son as well. It is absolutely phenomenal. It is fantastic. I did put the joke in chat that this is not John Travolta in this trailer. It's actually Nick Cage, and you all were fooled. If you know you know, enjoy the reference. Uh, but this trailer is absolutely yacht. I think you were the one to threw it in chat. It's phenomenal. Yes, yes. I, I beat Tarkov to it. The, the <laughs> weird part about it was when you put it in chat, uh, I didn't read the headline, like the title of it. I just saw the picture and I was like, the, the still frame, and I was like, why does Kratos look like Ben Stiller? Like, I could tell. it was. I was like, why does he look like Ben Stiller? Then I clicked on it, opened it up, and I was like, well, it's because Kratos is Ben Stiller. <laughs> I thought it was a Saturday Night Live bit at first. When I saw it, it was just a show note YouTube link, and it came up on YouTube, and I was like, what the F is this? And I almost turned it off because I was like, I don't even know what's going on here. It is, very it is so well done. Like, normally, there, there is a high probability – Attempts at humor like this can come off as just they miss, right? And they're just cringy as all hell. This isn't. It is a riot all the way through. And I think with the fewest lines, LeBron James is probably the funniest. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Some yeah, of the definitely. faces LeBron makes throughout this entire thing, <laughs> when he's looking at his son or when he's looking at John Travolta in particular, they are hysterical. This is it's such a well done trailer. The the number one YouTube comment on it that I saw and I agree with is I want to see a part two where all three of them are in Kratos <laughs> regalia. Yes. Yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> so even as if you're not a god of, uh, a god of war fan, 100% check this out. But we are seeing the early reviews for God of War trickle in now and uh it's doing well, gents. It's doing well on uh the PlayStation 5 so far with 124 critic reviews already in. 120 we're not talking like 6 124 PlayStation 5 God of War Ragnarok reviews already in. A meta score of 94, Troy. 94. And this thing has so many 100s. There are, if you just scroll down through all of them, I mean, it's ridiculous. You got you scroll down for several pages until you get out of the 100s. It's absolutely you get down to the 90s. killing it. Killing it. Now, again, no... No user reviews yet. Doesn't come out until the ninth. And well, we're yeah, not normally, to have any users yeah, yet. <laughs> yeah, and normally, you know, you can go ahead and okay. Uh, the first review on the PlayStation Four is in, by the way, and it's a hundred, but that's just one singular review. We're looking at the PlayStation Five version. You know, often you'll see a game that's got a higher critic rating and has like a dozen critical reviews, and it's like an eighty-eight, and then the user score plummets. I, I don't anticipate that here. When you were seeing 124 <laughs> critical reviews with a meta score of 94. Uh, are you excited, Yod? It does look really good. And I mean, I I, I didn't play the original, but I, I watched the uh, the videos on playthroughs and stuff. And it, it is re it's a really solid story. And I do want to see where it goes with it. You want to see where Kratos goes with boy? Yes. Yeah. Uh, boy. And, and I, I mean, I love the fact that... Um, the voice actor for Kratos is uh, was his name from Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> this is it makes it all the better. The the just the uh, the boom his booming voice going boy <laughs> boy. Troy, is this one of the game series that makes you mad? Sony doesn't bring more to PC. Like, is this a series you've wanted to get involved with at different times or when it was brand new and just like been pissed you couldn't because you're not a console guy? can't say some of the originals were but definitely the last one you know before it came to pc i was definitely missing that and this one this time you know waiting around seeing if this one comes to pc like it likely will uh, but it's gonna be a long wait yeah uh, for when it does so yeah a little, little sad that i can't just jump on this one day one yeah and we talked about like sony in an interview saying oh the live service ones yeah we'll get those to pc fast but the other ones may take a year plus. Yeah, the other ones, yeah, a year, year and a half, something like that. The street date on this was broken. Now, if you don't know what street date is, it means you never worked retail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, and God bless you for it. Uh, but I used to run a Best Buy uh, in a previous life, uh, and I started as the media senior, which back in that day was like in charge of DVDs, music CDs, video games, PC games, like the media usually was the center of the store, you know, when CDs were sold en masse. Uh, now you have a bin. Jeez, and what are those? A, right. So street date, we would get a box of God of War Ragnarok. We'd probably get it on, you know, the third, the fourth, the fifth, right around now, uh, maybe a little earlier for something this big. And it would be clearly marked with stickers on every side of the box, and a box might hold like 30. Every single side, big neon green or neon orange stickers. If you've worked retail, you know. And it's street date, not to be released prior to, boom, date, real big, November 9th. And you could actually get fined for violating street date if it was found out, even if it was accidental. Like, somebody opened the box just to check what it was and scan it in so that it was in the inventory, ready to go, and then a customer came in and was like, Yod, do you have the God of War? And Yod was like, I don't know, let me go check, and goes in the back and finds it, brings it out, gives it to a customer, not paying any attention. Totally accidental. But if they checked those receipts and saw street date violations on DVDs, music CDs, and software, the store could get fined. Could get yep. fined. 
and the employee would get fired. It could, yeah, could. If it was if it was something like this, uh, you'd probably just get like a written warning. But if you like violated street date on a console, oh yeah, uh, you'd be fired. Oh. You would be fired right oh, yeah. away. God of War is having its fair share of street date violations. Uh, and it's pissing off the team because these street dates aren't just street date broken. They're street date week broken. <laughs> yeah. Some stores sold some 10 days prior to release. So if you go online right now, there's a good chance if you want to look for it, you can find story spoilers already, Troy. Because 10 Corey Balrog, creative director over at Sony Santa Monica is really disappointed. A retailer, his quote, a retailer selling the game nearly two weeks before release. Just so disappointing. Sorry to everyone that you've had to dodge the spoilers if you want to play the game fresh. Completely fucking stupid. You have to do this. This is not at all how any of us at uh, uh, Sony Santa Monica wanted things to go. You know, right now, I can really understand the benefit of just having an installer on the physical disc. That kind of coming from a Modern Warfare 2, the retail disc really only having a tiny fraction of the game on it. So very, very, very upset, Troy. Oh, wow. You're still getting the sales for it. Still making money off of it. It happens it happens if you're in that business it happens i'm uh, just be glad you didn't like it didn't leak out before even the street date was broken because that's the age we live in nowadays is that the stories are always leaked out before anything else so just be glad that didn't happen i'm not i'm not feeling terribly sorry for them you're not yeah. feeling you're not feeling bad for sony they're, they're gonna they're gonna make plenty of money on this game <laughs> developers gonna bank anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah Plenty of money being made. Not feeling sorry for you. Sorry. Bro. Have I? Have any of you bought anything prior to Street Date? Like all three of us have worked some type of retail or had close friends that worked retail. Do we understand those types of things? But have you guys ever bought something prior to Street Date? I bought Star Trek Online the day before it was out. I was installed and ready to go when it. Oh uh, yeah, that 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 one kind of hurts though because you get home and install yeah. it, and you still can't do anything it, with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's like getting wow the day before it came out. You're like, great, yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Yod? Oh, um, the only thing kind of odd that I have is a long time ago, um, there was a, I, I don't know if any of you remember, Image Comics. The, the, oh, yeah. the one of the divisions was Wildstorm, uh, the one owned by Jim Lee. And, um, they had a TCG a long time ago um, at a Chicago at the the last Chicago Comic Con before it became Wizard World. Uh, me, my brother, and my cousins were there, and my brother was going around the tables checking things out and picking up freebies and stuff. And they had a set of the demo cards laying on the table. The, these are proofs from the printer. Right. They're not for sale. My brother may have thought they were free. Oh, and uh, so he violated street date and <laughs> stole them. <laughs> he, he grabbed the Caitlin Fairchild card because he knew that was my favorite character. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, I so, love, I love you, brother. I stole this for you." <laughs> it, it does not resemble the cards that are sold. <laughs> the artwork is completely different to the one that was sold. Oh, and there's dear. a black border around it. I almost got <laughs> I almost got Diablo three, but the the Walmart old lady employee that was going to ring me up had to ask a younger guy for the key. And when he realized what it was, he was like, "I can't sell this to you." Uh, there were a number of times working at Best Buy, being in charge of that stuff. I may have taken shit home early. <laughs> <laughs> it it might have happened more than once. I don't recall for sure if it ever really <laughs> happened or not. Baron Vagabond in chat says Wrath of the Lich King, Walmart screwed up. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, think Walmart's I, a good Walmart's usually a oh, yeah. good place to go if you want to get stuff early. Yeah, they, it's like they don't pay attention in electronics no, at all. They just they they get the pallet in and they're just like, where do we put this? Some of the bigger <laughs> stuff you'll see empty spots and price labeled ready to go, but no product there. But some of the smaller stuff, like, you know, they they just Put it out on the shelf. They get three collector sets of something in. They don't. Their brain doesn't. 
hey, this is the Diablo 3 collector's set. We're holding Diablo 3 in the back. We should probably hold them now. They just put the collector's sets out. <laughs> Walmart Walmart doesn't pay their employees enough to care. True. True. <laughs> Takao got a 360 Elite at Walmart uh, violation of street date. That's that's bold. Yeah. That's nice. That's a nice grab yeah. right there. Speaking of broken uh, broken street dates, Sonic Frontiers is having that same problem right now. Are they? Yeah. Now this is maybe one that you feel bad for Noob Fridge because I don't know if they're going to get all that money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hopeful for Sonic Frontiers to be a decent current gen Sonic game. We'll see. Uh, but this one's actually appearing on Twitch an awful lot. <laughs> Uh, because not only did uh, some street date violations happen, but some uh, pirated version of the Switch version is already online uh, and being wildly circulated, if you were interested in that. Now, for the most part, the streams get shut down pretty quickly, but there have been few that have been up for like an hour or so uh, before they actually get taken down. I haven't watched any of it yet, because I just don't have any hope in a good Sonic game, but I miss a good Sonic game, man. I miss and a I, good Sonic game. And I think the, the pirated version of this is going to hurt more than, more than anything. Yeah. Else. The thing about yeah. Sonic games is the challenge of being able to, you know, do it yourself. But the, having pirated versions, that's going to that's gonna hurt sales a lot, especially if it's being widely distributed on the Switch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because with God of War, it's more about story. With Sonic games, yeah. it's more about doing the thing. If I was yeah. worried about getting spoiled about God of War story, I would just avoid the internet entirely, <laughs> right. whether it was Broken Street Date or not at this point. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because you're, you're going to have leaks of just story content anyway, mm -hmm. uh, verbally and, and, and textually, even if you know no actual streams or anything. Even reviews sometimes accidentally yeah. mention something yeah. that they didn't, you know, they didn't think about whenever they mentioned it. Yep. I guess it's better than being shut down, though. I guess it's better than it being is. shut down. So remember when Embracer Group bought a bunch of things off of Square Enix? Well, one of mm. those was uh, Enoma. Well, it became Enoma. Um, that was uh, one of the the purchases from Square uh, Square Enix. They were the ones responsible for like Hitman Go, like the the mobile one and stuff like that. Uh, they're being shut down after they just went through like this really stupid, expensive renaming and everything. <laughs> they're closing that down. Impacts about 200 employees. Some of them are being offered roles over at Eidos Montreal. The one of the other things that uh, Embracer Group bought. Um, and so yeah. We know they, that they, Eidos Montreal is working on a Deus Ex game. That's awesome. It's super early really? in development. We it's talked about it here. And it's not mobile. It's not a mobile. Right, right. <laughs> they're co-developing the new Fable game uh, with Playground Games, and they're working on an entirely new IP. So there's a lot of work to be done there. Uh, they say that they're closing this down to scale back their scope and cost of making games. They they had previously made Deus Ex Go, Hitman Go, Tomb Raider Go. So this was like their mobile division. And they want to focus more on consoles and PC. This is kind of like the exact opposite of every other gaming company on the planet right now, Troy, who is moving more into mobile. Embracer Group saying, nah, we're going to be leaving mobile a little bit here. Yeah, that's a little bit of a weird move uh, overall based on the market. But, you know, know where your bread is buttered. Um, maybe your mobile games haven't done the, the just the absolute gangbusters of some of the other ones out there. Maybe, you you know. You're just like, you know what? PC sales is where it's at. Let's let's concentrate on that, consoles and PCs, and make the money there. It, it is weird to see it uh, come off of there, but at least they're not, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for the ones who lost their jobs, but at least they're not opening an NFT studio. <laughs> it's true. It's not an NFT studio. I, I think it also depends on which IP you're talking about, because some IPs would do well in a mobile platform, but games like Deuce X and... Yeah, raise and, your uh, hand if you Raider played stuff. any of the mobile games I mentioned, even if it was just to check it out. Yeah, that's what exactly. I thought. That's what I thought. Exactly, yeah. That's what I thought. And and it does sound like they're trying to find places for as many employees as they can, uh, you know, that, that actually do a job there. 
as opposed to managers and higher ups that really don't do that much stuff. So, I mean, that is a cost saving measure. You know, you, you get the employees that are actually working on things, working on things and cut out the extra fat that doesn't really do anything anymore. It's an interesting move getting it out of mobile. It very, very much is. Um, and hopefully, yeah, a lot of them. I mean, there's plenty of Eidos Montreal projects. And you know what? Bring that staff in and give me my legacy of Kane. That's all. Bring the exact see, see, there you go. Bring that that, staff that's in there. <laughs> and give me my legacy of Kane. More <laughs> leaks. More leaks. More, More leaks. Street date violations, leaks. rumors, leaks. Bye. Hideo Kojima's oh. unannounced overdose game has been leaked as well in a very weird... Seemingly. Yeah, seemingly. like there's a video of a absolutely, totally shirtless guy just chilling there, <laughs> and it's very bizarre. I'm not going to show it here simply because the videos that have been propping, some of them pop up and some of them are being DMCA takedown. Like, so I'm just not going to chance anything here. Um, so, yeah, it's a yeah, short so video. It appears to feature uh, Margaret, Margaret Qualley, who was in Death Stranding, uh, using a flashlight to kind of look around corridors from a third-person perspective, very PT-esque. Uh, and then there's a jump scare right at the end, the word game over, and then a screen that says a, a Hideo Kojima game, overdose. That's it. Now, my question is, is this actually leaked, or is it Kojima leaked? Well... <laughs> Kojima Productions are the are the ones through YouTube and other places uh, requesting the takedowns. Yeah, okay, okay. So, so. kind of like, I mean, obviously they could certainly say, hey, put these up, and by the way, we're going to hit you with a takedown because it's a marketing right. thing. But it lends a little more credence to it, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that does. All depends on what they say, though. <laughs> in June, he confirmed that he was working on a cloud-based project with Xbox. We don't know if this is the exact same thing, but he said, this is a game I've always wanted to make. It's a completely new game, one that no one has ever experienced or seen before. I've waited very long for the day when we can finally start to create it. With Microsoft's cutting-edge cloud technology and a change in the industry's trend, it has now become possible to challenge myself to make this never-before-seen concept. If this succeeds, it'll turn things around, not just in the game industry, but in the movie industry as well. And Troy, I just have to ask you, how much bullshit is in that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> All of it. All of it they could muster and put into one sentence. Let's overblow as much as we can overblow and make it sound like a big deal. So much hype. So much. So much hype. He's he's actually really pissed, too, right now. At least, you know, he says in interviews. Uh, well, this wasn't an interview. It was, like, on his podcast. He was his new podcast. He was talking to uh, uh, Jeff Keighley uh, from the Video Game Awards. And he's still, like, miffed about the whole abandoned thing from Blue Box uh, Game Studios. We've talked about that a couple <laughs> of times here. Yeah, and he's, like, really still yep. miffed about that. Yeah. He says, well, this one I really didn't understand at first. Users just kept sending me pictures of this Hassan, the, the guy uh, from yep. Blue Box. Uh, they still send me collages and deep fake images like 20 <laughs> a day. It's really quite a nuisance. This has been going on for almost two years now. And Jeff, you remember when we did that Moby Dick thing? You were in on the whole thing, and that was pretty fun. But people should know that I wouldn't do the same thing twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think... Uh... I think it's because he wasn't in on it is one thing he's annoyed about. <laughs> and another, another thing is it's a, a company that has not they, they haven't they haven't um finished their game. You know, yeah. it, it they they've made promises and they haven't fulfilled their promises. And it, it kind of looks in, in his mind, I don't know about anybody else's mind, but in his mind I think it looks bad reflected upon him if he's connected to that in any way, even if it's a fake murder board way. <laughs> So yeah, I think I think he, he that is why he's pissed did, about did, it. Did did either of you play Death Stranding? I have no. not. No. I mean, it was all it was all right. I hear it's really good though. It was all right. Like I, a lot there, of it was are, like I've, you, I've played plenty of walking simulators. Yeah. You, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, this is post-apocalyptic FedEx simulator. Right. Go, get it right. right. <laughs> I mean, it's all right. But there was like it was some of it was just like so. 
esoteric that it was way out there. And then some of it was like, this flat out doesn't make sense. Not like Metal Gear Solid and you're retconning things. It doesn't make sense. Like, it just yeah. doesn't make sense. I don't know. I'm still waiting on, like, the Hideo Kojima game that, like, makes me feel like when I played Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 2, right? Like, that... Not to say that 3, 4, or 5 weren't good in their own respects. I just don't hold them in the regards that I do 1 and 2. They're uh, about the same. Yeah, I mean, there. I still... Metal Gear Solid 4 is one of my favorite games as well, too. I really like that one, even though I know it's not a lot of people's favorite. But, like... Man, just like some of the stuff in Metal Gear Solid playing that, like the whole controller thing with Psycho Mantis and the code to the codec code on the back of the box to get to Meryl. Just like it just felt that was new. That, that was new. Um, I just haven't had that feeling from a Kojima game lately. I like the stuff he does. Uh, I just haven't been blown away. And apparently now Troy's going to change gaming and the movie industry if it works. And if he doesn't change the movie and game industry, he'll just say it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tried. Uh, some miscellaneous news before we call it a day here. PlayStation Plus not doing so good, Troy. What the hell's going on here? Well, apparently, uh, ever since they revamped the PlayStation Plus bonuses, uh, they've been losing up to 2 million subscribers. Wow. Wow. They just redid them in June, so they've had two million in losses since then. Holy hell! I mean, let, let's put it in perspective, though. We are talking about a service that has like forty-five million people on it, so uh, it's not going away anytime soon. Don't get me yeah. wrong; they, they didn't go from four million to two million. Uh, right, right. You know, Game Pass would love to have forty-five million. Say, they're, they're still ahead of Game Pass. Yeah, maybe they'll get there, but. Um, yeah, losing 2 million doesn't look good, particularly after a revamp to try to compete with Game Pass. I love this from CFO Hiro Hiroyoki Totoki. <laughs> Such a great quote. He said there hasn't been great momentum. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, they've lost uh, quite a few <laughs> subscribers, but they've made more money. Uh, yeah, well, the the company as a whole uh, had a ten percent increase in revenue for the the gaming part. Yeah, so the subscription part, part I, th I think, at least from what I read and understood, it seemed like they made a bit more in the subscription part too, yeah. because of the different tiers. So yeah. some of those people boosted the amount they're giving them, and you know, it's it's just and more some money. Some people walked away because it was so convoluted when they introduced that that they right. didn't want to mess with it no more. Right, and other oh. ones were reminded that, oh yeah, there's this chunk of money coming out of my bank account every month that I haven't been using. <laughs> it hasn't had great momentum. <laughs> it's not had great momentum. I mean, sure, you call it that. This, I'm amazed this hasn't happened yet. Uh, Lionsgate movie producers uh, CEO says that a big triple A John Wick video game could happen. Yod uh, John Feltheimer from Lionsgate, the CEO, saying that the film studio has been fielding proposals for a new video game based on the Keanu Reeves action series. It would be a big triple A game, but he shied away from sharing any further specifics due to the pending nature of discussions saying I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but we believe there is a big AAA game to be made out of John Wick. We've been fielding proposals. How has this, like, not happened already? I I think it's because they want to do it right. Uh, they, tell you, no, go they, ahead, sorry. Well, the, 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 um, and I, I believe Keanu actually has a big stake in the movie franchise as well. Because they're they're doing they're doing the movie franchises. The I think believe what the fourth one is coming out soon, and they've got I think a TV series in the works that's some kind of spinoff from the movies. There's some comics in the works for it, so they want to make sure they don't get hamstringed by a video game that does poorly. So they want to they're they're very careful with this. In, in the, the yeah, I mean, we got all this John Wick too. stuff happening now, but I look back, like, John, there was a huge gap between 1 and 2 and 2 and 3, weren't there? Uh, like 1 how, and 2, yes. How have we not three. had the game already? <laughs> like, <laughs> I get why you wouldn't want to fire one out now with all right. this other media 
and and you want to make sure there's a quality. Like I get that, but like, how was there not after the success of the first one? I I don't know I, that I don't know. Yeah, like I you you know. watch that movie and you, Troy, you walk away going, if that was a game, I'd play it. <laughs> Heck yeah! And let me tell you what I would play. Let me let me let me let me tell you what I'm envisioning <laughs> right now too, because what I don't want is like a Hitman clone, because that would be the oh, easy geez. out, right? Is like Hitman yeah. clone. What yeah, I'm exactly. envisioning is Batman Arkham with guns. That's what I want. I want that fluidity. I want. I, he's got to be able to do the melee attacks too, but with guns right. and just blazing and just swooping around and just being as smooth as it is in the in the movies. That's what I'm envisioning. Don't just do a Hitman clone. You want that uh, that like Arkham Asylum combo based smooth yeah. combat. Not, not the it. ones I'm gonna that kill somebody with a pencil not the, and then shoot a guy in the face. Not the combat that they have put in Gotham Knights. Not that one. Not no, that not one. Not that one. Not that and, one. And load up a roll of quarters into your shotgun. It could <laughs> happen. John Wick, triple A video. I mean, it would yeah. need to be triple A. Like, you, you, what yeah. are you going to do? Sell it to an indie? No, of course not. Modern Warfare 2's composer, according to PC Gamer, has left the project and disowned the entire soundtrack. Over, disowned the soundtrack. Yeah, that's, over that's challenging work dynamic with the audio director. Quote, I feel a responsibility to fans to remain authentic in my approach with the game and its sound. That's Sarah Schnockner, the composer of the Modern Warfare 2 tracks. Um... I think she also did some other one too. Oh yeah, 2019 Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Infinite Warfare. So this isn't like new to the project, uh, but she says that this has uh, been an increasingly challenging working dynamic, working with uh, Modern Warfare 2's audio director, unable to continue working on the music and soundtrack release for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone. So she's just washing her hands of the whole thing. Apparently... What had happened was, Yod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What there were happened? disagreements over the soundtrack release, where like the kind of cam- a straw that broke the camel's back here. Uh, Schnockner worked on the soundtrack release uh, with mixer Frank Wolf and producer Mike Dean, but the preferred masters that they wanted to release aren't going to be released. So she says, ultimately, you'll never get to hear what they wanted the masters to be. Instead, what will be released on the soundtrack is not my artistic intent in regards to mixing and master uh, and mastering. So that was it. Walking away. That's a pretty substantial paycheck for a music composer to be walking away that from. Is, so I, I'm going to have to think there was a little more behind the scenes here. Yeah. 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 I mean, there definitely had to be. I mean... There, there is a certain amount to say about you know the artist wanting their vision to be the one that is no seen. doubt, no doubt, yeah. But they are also the composer and but, not the director. Yeah, yeah. Big butt, big butt. Yeah, but, but once again, they they are the composer and not the director. And there's also a, the video game company behind it cutting that big check. Yeah, so they all so have he... says to this. Here's here's where I kind of like maybe fall a little Troy on this more the side of the artist here. I get the whole point that they're not in charge of the sound design of the game. That is ultimately going to be the director's decision on how things are mixed, how things are mastered, how they're cut and put in here. We're talking about the release of the soundtrack. I feel like that should fall a little more <laughs> on this is the way I originally. Uh, what's stopping you from putting multiple cuts on there? Original artist cut, in-game cut. Like, right. what? What is what is stopping that from being charge an extra know, five dollars for it because you're going to put eight extra tracks on it? A bonus disc. The company that owns it at the end of the day doesn't want to do that, and they don't have to do that. And it just sounds like a couple of folks who just didn't get along very well. Probably at that's all. why probably I think like there was there was well. definitely more. There was yeah. def- you don't walk away from that paycheck over. The, I could see being upset. This isn't the music I wrote. This isn't what I want to release. Uh, right. Okay. This can't be the first time as a composer that has happened to you. So there's, like you said, there's got to be more give and take. There's, 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 there's a middle ground of the story somewhere that we don't know, uh, may never know, and maybe it comes out later. Who knows? I mean, that, that's some definite venom there, though, with the disowning of yeah. the soundtrack as well. Not just walking away, 
Yep. But going, you know, this isn't mine. This isn't mine. And, and I'm, I'm, yeah, take my name off of that type of deal. I mean, yeah. we've seen like Hollywood writers and directors do that, right? Like, <laughs> what was the. Oh, there was a. Hold on. <laughs> I can't remember what it was for. Uh, uh, uh. They don't use it anymore because too many people uh, knew what it was. But there used to be a um, Alan Smithy. Like if a director backed out of a project after yeah. it was done yeah. and they didn't want their name on it, they used to put right. directed by Alan Smithy on, on, on the movies. Right. There should be like a game equivalent of that. <laughs> <laughs> Worked on by Newbridge. <laughs> like, man, Newbridge <laughs> does a lot. Yeah, Bridge does a lot. Hey, I know like neither of you are really looking forward to actually playing this. I know Yad, you you look forward to watching me play yes, it. I, I uh, Callista Protocol. Play. We're a month away from Callista Protocol, but I did want for those of you that are following it as closely as I am, there is a six part prequel podcast coming out over the course of this month that kind of sets the stage. It is by no means necessary to enjoy the game. But if you are really into what they're doing here and hoping it's good, fingers crossed, um, and you want some prequel story kind of going into it, there is a podcast up. The first two episodes, it's going to be a six-episode job, the first two episodes are already up. And you can get them basically on any podcast, like a Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. It's everywhere. Just search Callisto Protocol on your favorite podcast uh, platform. The first two episodes are already up, and then it's going to be one a week until December 1st, and then the release is right after that. So you have yeah, episode one and two up right up. now. Yeah, yeah, I have not I have it queued up, but I haven't started it yet. Uh, so if you're looking forward to Callista Protocol as much as I am, that I think is kind of neat prequel stuff. But you, by all means, don't need to listen to it uh, to enjoy the game. EA finishing up here says a major game will be released before April 2023, and the internet seems to think it's probably Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This coming from their kind of uh, title slate, having Q4 of fiscal year 2023, which we are in right now. It will end in March. Um, they just have for Q4, which would be January through March of next year, major IP, along with Dead Space, PGA Tour, Super Mega Baseball, and Wild Hearts, and then Major IP. And if you kind of look at their slate, what we know, this does kind of coincide with when we m would probably expect to see Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Yeah, I want it to be. <laughs> I want it to be. He doesn't want to have his so much dash. disappointment. <laughs> I mean, it certainly could be something we don't know about. Must be college football. Uh, I think that's late 2023, though. That they're you think? planning. That you they're think planning they're that one. That? Yeah. You don't think they're gonna get a jump on that? No, I think they're they would push that like right before the college football season started. Yeah, that would make more sense. Yeah, like kind of like what they do with Madden, which is like the, an this August one's gonna release. be this one's gonna be like a, a FIFA mobile gacha RPG <laughs> where you don't yes. even play soccer; yes. you just collect the players. <laughs> with all the nfts all the nfts <laughs> it could be we'll see yep. i do want it to be star wars jedi i know i know i, I it, there's a hope and if you play tabletop games like troy and i particularly if you're into card games like i am there is going to be a new star wars deck building game as well next year just using Star Wars as the segue there. <laughs> and it's all but this one is set to land in March of 2023. <laughs> so And coincidentally, very, very coincidentally, by the way, because I didn't even see I guess I just missed this note uh, until like right before I sat down. Uh this is looking very similar to my game of the week this week, too. Is it really? Gameplay wise, yeah. Nice. Uh, this, for those of you who don't know, this is a deck building game, not a CCG. So you don't collect the decks and build your decks beforehand. It's right. a deck building game. So you're building your deck as you go through the game uh, based on what's in front of you available to purchase or defeat, depending on uh, the type of currency you're using. It's looking good. It's looking good. Uh, fantasy flight games. So, you know, whatever. It's going to be top notch. It's, it's, it, even if the game 
doesn't last long because it's you know got its issues, there'll be quality cards at least. <laughs> there will be. <laughs> there'll be quality cards at least. Uh, and last piece, perhaps one of the most interesting things. States are passing laws now that when you are posting a job, you have to post the salary range. That's uh, Believe it or not, and if you've ever applied for a job here in the United States, you may already know this, that, uh, yeah, they, they don't have to disclose that salary up front. They should, but they don't have oh, to. Based on experience. Right. A bunch of bullshit. Uh, every time I go to Walmart, they tell me how much the milk is up front, but they won't tell yeah. me how much I'll earn for coming to stock that milk. That's kind of bull. Mm-hmm. <laughs> New York has already passed a law, uh, and other states are following suit that require a salary range to be disclosed ahead of time for multiple reasons, but one of the primary reasons being so that you can't, uh, you know, pull the old switch and bait or bait and switch because you got a male uh, applicant and you got a female applicant and I'm going to pay the female less, which is a problem here in the United States and and other forms of discrimination or pay alteration or things like that. Uh, So this is already in effect in New York. Why am I bringing this up here? Because we have game companies based in New York. So if you want to know how much game companies pay for certain positions, yes, New York might have a higher cost of living than where you live. Um, But we're starting to see these. Rockstar, Ubisoft, Take-Two, Epic, they all have offices in New York. So you can, and credit to Axios who has done, you can go through and see like Rockstar is looking for games launcher product leads right now at 163k to 184k voiceover directors for 123 to 144k physics programmer so you can start to see what these companies I'm not going to go through all of them all the way down to like $15 per hour which is New York's minimum wage for Ubisoft for a part-time gig at a demo booth right so you can see everything the other really interesting part of this is the states that are right behind New York, gentlemen. Pay transparency laws will be coming into effect next year in California and Washington. That's like everybody in the the United States games (laughs) industry, pretty much. Yeah. Valve. There's there's your tech and game companies right there. You want to see pay? Valve, Bungie, Microsoft, Nintendo, EA, Activision, Riot, uh, and a ton more. They are all in those two states. So they will all have to be transparency uh, closing and giving that pay. Giving that pay. They give a range that's like 50K wide, Kalen says. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they are wide ranges. Yeah. 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 Like, particularly when you're looking at some of the rock star ones, uh, you know, a manager for content policy, 159 to 206. But yeah, that is literally. A forty-three thousand dollar range, uh, or yeah. no? I'm sorry, that's even more than that, right? Yeah, fifty. Yeah, yeah. No, it's forty-seven. Forty-seven. Um, that is a big range. The other one's not so much, though. Like senior systems engineer at Ghost Story Games, one twenty-one to one forty-two, a twenty-one range, and the others are like twenty-eight. But yeah, you do expect there to be a range and a little oomph based on experience. But at least you don't go into the interview going, am I about to make 60K a year or am I, am I about to make $15 an hour? Like, I don't know. I've always hated going to job interviews and I like they look at me cross-eyed like I committed a faux pas saying, what's the expected salary? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like, what do you think I'm here for? I'm here for the money. I'm not here because I wanted to be. Yeah. No, you're supposed well, to be we're, there for the company. Yeah, we're, we're looking yeah. for somebody that, you know, is you know going to help the company make profits and be interested in achieving company objectives. Great. Yeah. Uh, that's here not the reason I'm here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have rent. <laughs> I have a mortgage. I have bills. So I like, not only does this like open up transparency, which I think should be. Right. But it also forces companies to be competitive. Right. Yes. Like no longer what each other is making. Let's pretend Blizz, you know, didn't have doesn't have as many problems as they do, gentlemen. But let's pretend like the mystique of working with Blizzard isn't, you know, a thing 
right now, right? It's they they don't but for years and years they banked on that. Mm-hmm. You want to come and work for Blizzard. Look at what we do and we we'll cancel a game before we put a piece of shit monetization <laughs> raking you over the coals thing out there. Oh shit, we just launched Overwatch 2 and Diablo Immortal. Uh, <laughs> but now, you know, th- so we will will pay less because the mystique carries it. Uh-uh. No. Riot right down the street is also looking for a program coordinator. And they're paying at minimum $20,000 more than you. Like, it's going to force a little more competition yeah. in, in some of these spots. And obviously, yeah, some of these things are going to be working part-time at a booth, making minimum wage in that state. But I, I like the transparency, and I like that it's, it forces a competitive aspect on there. You, you want to apply for any of these, new French? Anything up here you want to apply for? <laughs> yeah, I'm experienced in all, all of that. I'll, I'll begin the top end pay, of course, whenever I start. Top end pay. With that said, let's go do our games of the week. Of the week is the way we end every episode of Gaming Gumbo here on Ready Check Radio. All three of us are going to give you a game. Could be a board game, mobile game, console game, PC game, something we've played, we're playing now, played in the past, or have never played but think you should check out because we're going to check it out. And you let us know in the comments below who gave the best recommendation of the week when you chime in on everything else we've discussed today. Troy, since you've teased yours a little bit, we'll go to you you first. Uh, My game of the week is a game that Ah, I've been playing pretty hard for the past two weeks, Ascension, the deck building game. Uh, This is an older edition. This is one I've had for a while, so the new box is going to look different than this. But you can also play it on Steam. You can play it on your phone. Uh, You play it pretty much anywhere you want to try to play games. Uh, There's a center row. You and up to four players are competing to get points by defeating things in the center row or purchasing heroes in the center row to build your deck and make your deck better so that you can defeat or purchase more things as you go on. It's a classic deck building game. Uh, It's going to play very similarly from the looks of it to the Star Wars game. So if you want to get a sort of a heads up on a general rundown of how it looks like that's going to play, from the pictures I've seen, it looks very similar. Uh, Check out Ascension, the deck building game. Yod. I am looking at Ghost Song on uh, Game Pass right now. It looks like a Metroidvania type BPS game that I should probably played last week, but you know we had all that Parasite Eve, Silent Hill, and all the other news. <laughs> all that crying, all that yes, crying, all that crying. I'm gonna go with Star Ocean, the most recent one that came out, and I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know if my overall review of the game is going to be positive or negative when I get there. But I am enjoying it so far, so I'm gonna recommend that one. Let us know. All your thoughts on everything we discussed in the comments below on readycheckradio.com or over on YouTube. But chat, don't go anywhere after the show today. Torchwick is back. Took last week off to hang out with some friends, but mm-hmm. back this week for your viewing pleasure. What are you streaming this week, Torchwick? Uh, we're going to be picking up Final Fantasy Tactics right where we uh, left off, you know, with the death of some of our favorite characters. Yes, yes. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. Mm-hmm. So you're not just uh, running the entire Black Mage party again, huh? <laughs> no, no, that worked. And then I found Summoner, and then I really like Summoner. So, I it, mean, the it, problem, they, they might have died because they weren't Black Mages, <laughs> but God, did they die as a Summoner. Did you pick up Cloud, though? Did you go through it? No, the I, thing don't, I don't know where or when or how to do that. Yeah, so this, I'm, this, I'm this is first no. playthrough. First playthrough. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's... We, with, we had with no tips so or tricks or anything. That out. Yeah. yeah. No tips or tricks. First playthrough. Well, enjoy that chat. Don't go anywhere. After the show, give us a minute or two. We'll go dark, relabel the streams and everything, and then Torchwick will be back with some Final Fantasy tactics. We will, of course, be back next week with another episode of Gaming Gumbo here on Saturday night uh, and the Relic Grind, the Final Fantasy XIV Square Enix show on Thursday nights, both at 7 p.m. Eastern, but available from the website and from all your favorite audio places. Until then, Yod, where can everybody find you? Uh, Yod at work on Twitter. Yada works on uh, Facebook and right here on Gaming Gumbo. Troy. But I don't think I'm on next week. <laughs> hey, Twitter at Noob Fridge. Everything I do goes through there. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally right there at Magic Man, but more importantly, follow at RC Radio, R A I D E O, and that'll be $8 per month for your blue check mark. Stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. Yeah.